Hey, welcome to the finale of our favorites series. My name's Tim and I'm a part of the team here at becomenew.me. Today, we're gonna play the episode that you voted on to watch and I'm gonna tell you what it is right now. Are you ready? As you can see, it is Try Softer from the First Thoughts series. So we're gonna hear that in just a few minutes to tee us into that video today. I've asked a couple members from our Facebook group uh, to introduce the video. So Doris from Hawaii and Rob from Perth, Australia. It's one of the things that I love about this community is that we're everywhere. I'm here in Minnesota and we're together on this journey, growing spiritually one day at a time, prioritizing the kind of people that we're becoming and learning how to do that together. So I'm gonna turn it over to them, but before I do, if you wanna find out what's coming next week, stick around for after this video and I'll let you know. Okay, you two. Over to you. Aloha, I'm Doris House, and I'm thankful to be part of the Fellowship of the Withered Hand and become new. And today is the last day of the favorites, and I'm excited to introduce Try Softer. When I think of Try Softer, I think of God taking the heavy load, the heavy yoke, and giving me the light load and the light yoke. And I have to just pay attention to His will and His divine order and not try so hard. And um, so this is why this was my favorite. G'day, my name is Rob Furlong and I am the senior pastor of Woodvale Baptist Church in the beautiful city of Perth on the west coast of Australia. I have been incredibly blessed by John's teachings over the past 15 years or so. And also I am a member of the becomenew.me Facebook community. Today's teaching, Try Softer, is a brilliant concept and when I first came across it in John's book, The Me I Want To Be, I was so taken by it uh, and it was relevant to a sermon that I was preaching the following Sunday. So I used the illustration and at the time my 10 year old granddaughter Emmy was visiting us from the East Coast and I always wonder what's sinking in and how much they're taking notice of. Well the next day we had to take her to the airport to send her back home to her folks. And as Emmy's walking through the terminal, she was having great difficulty getting the, uh, her luggage handle to retract back into her luggage. So being the great grandfather that I am, I took hold of her luggage and I began furiously trying to push this thing down. After several futile attempts at this, my dear little granddaughter looked up at me and simply said, try softer, Gramps. Wouldn't you know it, it worked. Sit back and listen to what John has to say today. I guarantee if you take on this principle, try softer, it will transform your life. So we're learning how to live one day at a time and do that with God. And do that by just having one clear, simple thought to take with us all through the day to anchor our lives. And the one today is super memorable. I promise you, you will, you will take it with you. It's only two words and it will change your life. It's kind of counterintuitive. I'll tell you when I first heard about it a long time ago, I had taken a job at a church and I was going to be leading the church and I was trying so hard. And I wanted to preach sermons that were inspiring and compelling and deep and that everybody would like and wanted to lead for everything I was worth and was reading all kinds of books on this and trying to cast vision and manage resources as in, and supervise people and challenge and come in early and stay late. And I was exhausted. Wasn't at all sure that it was going very well. Somebody who'd been around the church for a long time uh, came in my office, closed the door and said, John, I can see you're working really hard. We all can see you're trying really, really hard. Here's my advice for you. Try softer. Sometimes trying harder, more strain, more effort, more work, just begins to feel contrived and, and uh, not be effective anymore. And you're not at your best. You're not relaxed. You're not natural. If trying harder is not getting you where you want to go, try softer. It's taken me a long time to come to grips with those words. It doesn't mean that trying is a bad thing. Being able to exercise effort is a glorious capacity God has given to us. But if trying harder is not getting you where you want to go, here's something you might try. Try softer. 
instead of white knuckling, um, teeth gritting, clenched fist, more effortful, trying to be in control. Somebody said control is the master addiction. And that kind of trying that doesn't do us good is when we are trying to control what we're actually not able to control. Ancient Greeks talked about this. There was a painter, Apelles, and he was trying to paint the kind of foam that would come from a horse's mouth when a horse had been running. And he tried and he tried and he tried everything, every kind of brush stroke, nothing worked. Finally, he gave up and he threw the sponge that he would use to clean his paintbrushes against the painting. And he found to his amazement that that sponge created exactly what it was that he was trying to create with all of his effort that he could not do. And when he quit trying so hard, it happened. And every one of us will know this experience uh, in some area of our life. If you've ever been involved in athletics, then you'll know there's a moment where trying to hit a serve harder actually reaches a point of diminishing returns. Or in music, trying harder to play the piece exactly right just doesn't cut it. Or when you're on a first date with somebody, trying harder to impress them actually makes you less yourself or on a job interview. So then try softer because uh, what exhausts us is not effort. Uh, capacity for effort is a good thing. What exhausts us is when we try to control what we are actually not able to control. Leslie Farber is a brilliant psychiatrist who wrote uh, that we live in the age of disordered will. And Farber said, when it comes to the will, there are two arenas of life, two realms. There are objects that we are able to control directly by choosing. There are acts that we can make happen by willing them. But then there are goals, there are trajectories, there are outcomes that we would like to enter into, and we cannot control them by our will. We can will knowledge, he said, but not wisdom. I can will going to bed, but not going to sleep. You ever try really, really hard to go to sleep? I can will eating, but not hunger. I can will bravado, but not courage. I can will lust, but not love. I can will religiosity, but not faith. William James noted over a century ago, it's such a strange thing that there'll be certain uh, endeavors, like when there's a name that you're trying to remember and you can't remember and you try and try and try super hard. And the harder you try, the more frustrated you get. And then when you give up, it just comes to you. It just comes when you try softer. That's a picture of grace. No one has ever spoken of this more powerfully than Jesus did. And one of the most compelling times was in the Gospel of Matthew. In the 11th chapter, he came to people who were exhausted from trying really hard. Religious leaders very often send a message to people of just try harder, try harder, try harder, try harder to believe in God, try harder to be more faithful, try harder to be a better person. And it kills the human spirit. And so Jesus says, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Such amazing words. He says, if you're tired, if you labor and you're heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you. Now, that's very strange. Yoke is a, an instrument of burden. It's an instrument of work. If you're tired, he doesn't say, uh, I will give you a vacation, a trip to Vegas, um, Valium. He says, I, I will give you a way to do work. Why? Because we were made to contribute. We were made to engage with life. That's a glorious and good thing to do. But we wear ourselves out with it. In Jesus' day, in particular, a yoke was a word that rabbis would often use to describe their understanding, their way to arrange your life around God's will and God's word. There were all these commandments in Israel, and they were a great gift to Israel, but people had to try to figure out, if you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath, what constitute work? And one rabbi would have one idea, and one would have another idea. So that was a rabbi's yoke. Here's the thing. Everybody has a yoke. 
because we all have to live. We all have to find a way of doing life. So Dr. Phil has a yoke. Dr. Oz have a, has a yoke. Dr. Ruth has a yoke. I read an article years ago, I think it was in the USA Today, that looked at if uh, you took the advice of all the w experts in different fields of life, how much do experts in sleep say you're supposed to sleep each day? And financial experts say you should spend on managing your finances each day. And health experts say you should spend exercising each day. And um, vocational experts, how much should you devote to your job? And parenting experts, how much should you devote your, to your children or to your marriage or to flossing your teeth? And it ended up, by the time you totaled it all together, it was something like 36 hours a day. Like there's not that much time in a day. Everybody has a yoke. Question is not whether or not you will have a yoke. Whose yoke will you choose? And Jesus says, my yoke is easy. Because what he aims at is transformation from the inside where I learn to rely not on my own power, but the power of God. It begins with surrender, the easy yoke. I can't. He can. I think I'll let him. Your will be done. And then something beautiful about his yoke for you to take into this day. Try softer, try softer, try softer. Ken Foreman, a pastor friend of mine, talks about how uh, in Jesus' day, uh, carpenters, of course, were the ones that would construct a yoke. And a good carpenter would go to a farm. And now a yoke is not something that I take on by myself. A yoke was always created for a pair of oxen, for two different animals. And a good carpenter would know which animal was stronger, which animal was more experienced, which animal was able to bear more of the weight. And sometimes with yoke, you would even have different size hold depending on the size of the animal so that the stronger animal could bear the heavier weight. Jesus was a good carpenter. You get into the yoke with him, see? That's the thing. That's what makes his yoke easy. I don't bear it on my own, and neither do you. He bears the heaviest weight. And that's why I don't have to go through life with my teeth clenched and my brow furrowed and, and my muscles all tensed up. Amazing things happen when you just relax. What I love about the morning prayer from AA is it begins, Now, God, direct my thinking so that it's divorced from self-seeking, dishonesty, self-pity, self-will and fear. Inspire my thoughts, decisions, and intuitions. Help me to relax and take it easy. Almost every morning when I say those words, I think, oh, that's just what I need. So today, try softer. When it comes to your relationship with God, don't try harder to have more faith. Remember when I fainted twice real early on when I was preaching, so many people would say, just try harder to trust God. You ever try harder to have more faith? Try softer. Just whatever amount of faith you have, whatever you're feeling, that's okay. Tell God. Today with your time, don't try harder to get more done faster. Try softer. You can't control time. You can't control the traffic. Just try softer. Today in your relationships, instead of trying to manage and control everybody around you, your friends, your relatives, your parents, your kids, your spouse, your ex, your whoever, today, let them be them. Let them worry about that. Try softer. Today at work, instead of obsessing over that email, that project, that pre try softer. That's the easy yoke. That's your day to day. One day at a time. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again for joining us on this journey through some of our favorite episodes over the last couple of years. And we're not done. We've got more to come. Next week, uh, John is going to shoot an episode to talk about the next series that's coming up. So you can expect that. And mark your calendars because next Wednesday, the 27th in the morning, we are going to go live with John and we're going to talk about what this thing is, become new.me. We're going to share some of the survey results that you all gave us by participating. Thank you very much. We're going to pull back the curtain and tell you and talk about those a little bit. And we're going to share some ways that you could get involved with the future of become new. So I hope that you'll tune in next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. 
As always, if you want prayer, you can reach out to us at 855-888-0444, or you can email us at becomenew.me at gmail.com. See you next time. Thank you.